Hi, and thank you for watching. Today I'm going to walk you through how to set up an API and protect it with different authentication uh, mechanisms in Tyke. And in order to do that, we're going to have to take uh, advantage of uh, an advanced feature that is actually quite powerful. So this is uh, more of an opportunity to showcase uh, that feature, which uh, we're going to call looping. So let's get started. Now, the very first thing we need is an API that we want to protect. So let's go ahead and add one first. Uh, I'm going to call this my users API. And then for listen path, uh, just users API is fine. And then for my target URL, so I'm going to use a mock response server called uh, jsonplaceholder.typeofcode.com. And then the last thing we're going to do is under authentication, we're going to set this to keyless for now. And then we're going to save. Now we can go back into the API so we can retrieve our listen path. And there it is. So I can copy that. And we can switch over to Postman. I'm going to add a new request. Paste my reverse proxy URL in here. And this is going, uh, I'm sending a request to uh, my local host on port 8080. And that's exactly where the gateway is running. And this is just a host name entry that will reverse proxy to, excuse me, that will resolve to localhost. And then I want the user's API listen path. And Tyke is going to listen on user's hyphen API and then reverse proxy to our JSON placeholder service. Lastly, I just want the user endpoint users endpoint and then hit uh, send and that's it now we get a response back from the server we can see we have an array of users so what's happened is we made an api request to tyke it's reverse proxied to our uh, users api and the users endpoint on the api and, and has uh, retrieved a list of users for us so that's our api so now we want to protect this api and we want to protect it with multiple authentication types. Let's pick authentication token is one method, and then OAuth is another method. This is a common use case we see where users have an API that they are using for service to service communication, where the OAuth flow is a good mechanism. And then they also want to expose it publicly so developers can uh, self service and retrieve their own tokens using the Tyke developer portal. So first up, let's create the auth token protector. So we're going to go back to the type dashboard here, and we're going to go under uh, this user's API. First thing we want to do is I want to disable this. And there we are. I want to set this to internal. Now, what this is going to do is going to make it so uh, publicly this API can't be accessed. It can only be accessed by our by another API within Tyke and then I can update. Now, if I switch back to Postman and we make the same request, we get a 404 page not found. This API is now hidden to the outside world. And that's good because it's open keyless, it's unprotected. So the next step is to add our authentication token uh, protection. So we're gonna go back to the API and we can go into here back to APIs, and now I'm going to add a new API. And this time, we're going to say users API shell auth token. OK, make it pretty clear what it does. Now, uh, under target, we're actually going to set this to foo, because we're not going to use this at all. We're going to keep scrolling to authentication type. We can see that it's auth token. And then we can save. So what have we done? We've set up a shell API that's going to reverse proxy to another API within Tyke. And how do we get it to do that? Well, first we go into our actual proxy that we want to send traffic to after validating an auth token. We copy that API ID. And then we go back to the user's API shell. We go under endpoint designer. 
I'm going to add a new endpoint. And then here, I want to set up a URL rewrite. And let's open that up. So now I'm going to add an empty match pattern. And then here is where we set uh, the, the new URL that we're going to send traffic to after we've performed authentication. So instead of using an HTTP protocol and accessing our API externally, we have to use the type protocol. Now using the type protocol, uh, type will actually know to expect an API ID here. We can paste that. And now it knows that when it's time to reverse proxy, it will send traffic to another API that's being protected in Tyke. And that's it. Now we just want to send traffic to the user's endpoint on that API, and then we can update. And that's really all we have to do. So let's go back up here. Now, if we want to uh, reverse proxy to our new listen path, we can grab that and go back to Postman. And now paste that in and add the trailing slash. And now if we hit send, of course, we get an authorization field missing. So now our API is being protected by an authorization token. So let's go back to uh, the dashboard and create a new key. I'm going to add a key. And I'm going to give it access to my uh, shell and create. So now we have an authentication token. So if I copy that, we can go back to Postman. And we can add an authorization header, an API key, and then paste that in here and send. And now uh, we're allowed through. So now let's do this with, with OAuth. And it's uh, quite a similar flow. So the first thing I'll do is go in here to my uh, final destination API and copy the API ID so I can reverse proxy to it. I'm going to add a new API. This time we're going to call it users API. Uh, where was that? There we go. Here's the shell auth token. And this time I'll say OAuth. And now everything should be the same target URL. We're just going to switch this to bar because we don't actually use it. We just want to make it obvious. And then for authentication, I'm going to use OAuth. And then the last step, of course, we have to set the rewrite. So I'm going to add a new plugin, add an endpoint here. And then for plugins, I'll add a URL rewrite plugin, match pattern. And here, we're going to rewrite to Tyke users. And that's all. Now we can save. And now it's the uh, same thing. We can just use our new endpoint to access our new API. So let's see what this looks like when it's time to expose it to the developer portal. Well, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and create a policy really quickly to wrap my APIs. So this policy is going to be my OAuth pol users API. I can set our rate limiting and quotas, but we're not going to do that. Access, I'm going to add the OAuth API and then create. Now, I want to go back to the catalog. Here's my portal API catalog, and I'm going to add a new API. I'm going to call it my users API OAuth. And for the policy, I'll select that policy I created, and then I save. So now, if we go back to our developer portal, we can see here under API catalog. There we go. Here's my users API, and we can even see that the authentication type is OAuth. So what we can actually do now is we can go in and create an OAuth client. We can select our API. And now we can actually go through the flow and create uh, an OAuth client. Now this OAuth client is going to give us access to our API. Of course, the listen path of the API is that new shell API that's being protected by OAuth token. After it validates the OAuth client, it will reverse proxy to our internal API, which is actually handling the final destination. Now, you might be thinking, do I need three APIs? Um, can I just have one for OAuth and one for Auth token? And yes, you could. But the nice thing is about setting that third API is that you can put all the logic for the final destination API in one place, and then just treat the other two as simple shell APIs with no logic in them besides the authentication. And now if we go back, we can expose our new 
excuse me, we can expose our auth token API in the same manner. So we go back uh, under policies, let's create a new policy. And this time I'll call it users API auth token. And then for access rights, I'll select my auth token API and then create. Go back to the catalog, add a new API auth token. Let's please select the policy. We'll select our auth token policy and then save. And now if we switch over to the developer portal and go to the API catalog, we can see that both APIs are now here. So a developer on our portal could self uh, subscribe to both the OAuth flow as well as the auth token flow that will eventually give access to the same API. What's nice about this also is that we get analytics for each API. So we can see how much each API shell is being used. So under our analytics activity by API, we can see here that we have our uh, users API OAuth and users API Auth. And we can see the number of requests that each one gets.